This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair Show. And today we're here with Aaron Jonathan Black, lead vocalist of Scorpion Child. How did you discover your voice? Well, I screamed for many years and, and decided at some point I should stop doing that and focus more on uh, singing because as, as, since I was a kid, I was always, you know, singing along to, you know, Skid Row and Black Sabbath and, you know, just heavy metal bands. And, and I, I wanted to utilize that before I scream it all away. And what? Punk bands and... Oh, punk. you were in punk bands? I've noticed that you've worn the Black Flag uh, Jealous Again shirt, which is one of my favorite EPs. So good. They're it so is. good. Yeah, that legit. Now, what inspired you to pursue music seriously, and were your parents backing you on that? Uh, they weren't at first. I mean, we were all, you know, punk rock kids playing, practicing in the basement and, you know, just gigging where we can. But, you know, I think I, I, when they figured out that I was actually doing it and not going to stop doing it, it, you know, there was a point where, you know, they, they just kind of, they, they let it happen and, and saw that I was actually doing something you know, positive with it. Would you consider yourself the architect of Scorpion Child? And if so, has it lived up to your original vision? You know, I have definitely had a vision when, when I first assembled the, the group. Um, and, it, you know, it's great to have, you know, Sean Avance was, you know, one who inspired, helped inspire my vision uh, from the beginning. And to have him still a part of this band is really important to me. And, and the rest of the guys definitely share the, the, the same perspective, musical perspective. So. so did it evolve into this kind of, you know, retro sounding group after a while? I mean, you said you were, a, you were in punk bands at first, but when you got in this band, was it what it is today? It was, it was much more retro and like much more rehashed, like old school classic rock. And I think over time, just as artists, uh, you know, we were like, I was able to, you know, capture the, you know, what, what I wanted from it and, and, you know, what those guys wanted out of it. You know, a little heavier, a little artsier, poppier even. So, you know, we figured out how to write songs and make it a little more intense, you know, a little more brooding. So It's working. Yeah, it's working. So, like, you know, naturally, I guess the punk energy is never going to leave that band, you know, it's it's there, you know, like it's there for Iggy, you know, and you got Stooges. It. So, how did the Austin, Texas music scene treat Scorpion Child on the way up? Um, well, in the beginning, it was received very well because people, it was almost like a novelty thing, you know. We were sort of like a flashback from the '70s, you know. We all had very '70s clothing, and you know, I guess that's not as much a part of the band any anymore. We've more evolved into you know, what we've always wanted to become but didn't know at that point, you know, we've, we've, we've just kind of, I guess, you know, evolved <laughs> into something that we didn't know it was going to be this particularly, but, but I had kind of envisioned that this would be a good place to take it, you know, and, you know, we love the 70s and 70s clothing and, 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 and all that, but, you know, just... We don't wear it as much anymore. I guess, you know, the reviews aren't as much about the look as, as they used to be. It's it's more focused on the music, it which is. is what we want it to be focused on. It's, dude, it's all about that music because you can look as cool as hell, and if you don't got the tunes, forget it. Nobody wants to hear it. Do you embrace the fact that Scorpion Child is being compared in the music press to, to bands such as Led Zeppelin, Early Rainbow with Dio, and Deep Purple? Um, yes, I mean, I think that's, you know, wonderful. I mean, I, I've never been particularly influenced by Led Zeppelin as much as I was, you know, Dio-related stuff. Or, right. Um, but, yeah, it's a good comparison. Perhaps, you know, Robert and myself feel music in a similar sense. Um, it's, I, you know, we're, we're, we're different performers, you know, we may sound similar, but, you know, I guess I understand what he understands about being a singer, I, you know, just, that's the similarity to me more than an aesthetic or, or an, you know, a, a, a sound similarity, it's, it's just the, the energy that he put into it, or, you know, like Dio, he was probably one of my favorite male singers ever, and I think he had really good control, I think, I, I definitely think that Dio um, was like the the godfather of 
like doom and heavy you know just he was such a powerful prominent singer of our you know him and Freddie Mercury you know? yeah. there were certain guys that really theatrically um, put it into place and it wasn't just about like selling like a sex symbol yeah. you know more it was about like you know just where where their heads at when they're performing you know and that's no discredit to Robert Plant I mean he's just a really sexy guy and women loved him and and that's and he had an extreme talent so all those guys bring something different to the table and like you know if if I'm even <laughs> anywhere within that league I think I'm I'm honored to 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 be amongst you know those those singers what is your greatest fear My greatest fear, you know, I've no, no one's ever asked me that before. I don't think. Um, I guess my greatest fear would be ah, probably fear itself. You know, there's just not a whole lot of room for fear, especially when you're doing what myself. Well, you know, what I, I put myself out there. The band puts themselves, you know, forward in a way that fear is just, you know. It's not going to help you, you know, overcome the obstacles. I mean, we've we've overcome so many, you know, hardcore obstacles, you know, just coming up as, as musicians. You know, just dealing with rejection on a daily basis is, you know, something not, I don't think everyone but musicians and performers in particular, uh, you know, deal with. How would you define the word evil? Awesome. Yeah, I think evil is... Uh, Evil, you know, as a heavy metal fan, like, evil to me has always just been, like, motivational. You know, as opposed to, like, evil, like Hitler evil or some tyrant that, you know, that's that's just wrong. I think I think evil is just, it's evil. It's, it's, it, it evokes a certain positive energy in, in, in my mind, you know, and... The word evil for you is more is redefined almost like Michael Jackson's bad is redefined as good. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you know, growing up a huge Michael Jackson fan when I was a kid too. He was probably the first performer and I still love him as a performer. I mean, there was no other performer like him and uh, presence like him and yeah, bad was good and evil for me is in in, in the rock music in world it's more symbolism I think. Definitely. Yeah, I mean I love evil music, yeah. you know, I love, you know, death and doom and, and music, you know. Whereas I, I, I don't necessarily like to focus on it for you know, it's the reality of its definition is is I can 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 kind of suck. How did the deal with Nuclear Blast Entertainment come about and uh, what makes you think they're a great fit for Scorpion Child? Well, having grown up a fan of the Nuclear Blast label, you know, buying, you know, Punch and Stench albums and, you know, when you're just growing up on, you know, listening to metal and, and gangster rap and that's, that's all we had was our skateboard and our metal and gangster rap and our punk, you know. So, I mean, it was a really important label for for, for me. So um, it was an accomplishment for you to actually be on Nuclear Blast Records? It's an honor because, you know, jumping to a major label right away or, or a really small indie was just, you know, a small indie w would have been more realistic, but the fact that, especially Monty Connor, you know, like I've known him who he was for <laughs> a better part of my life and, you know, the fact that he, you know, a and R the the deal with us it was it was a big a huge honor for me and to be able to have a conversation with them about music, you know, as 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 a peer has been really important to me. So the, 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 in meeting the team uh, the other day when we were in L.A., we met the Nuclear Blast staff here in the U S. Not the gigantic one over in Germany, mm -hmm. but they, they were all really inviting and just amazing people. And you know, we're, we're it's a pleasure for us to to find our home. Do you live by the precepts of sex, drugs, and rock and roll? And if so, do you own it or does it own you? Um. That's a loaded question. Um, it, it can own you. Um, you just, you know, it's 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 a little different than people think that sex, drugs, and rock and roll can exist. Um, but but it's it's not always 
exactly the way people think it is. You know, you go on a tour and it's not nothing but sex, drugs, and rock and roll, but it can be. So it depends on what city or who you're hanging out with. It's, it's situational. It's, it's how tired you are. Or, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to perform tonight on 30 minutes of sleep from being in Vegas and, you know, partying pretty hard last night with friends and, and you know, our bassist got married. We had two guitar players with, with birthdays wow. last night. So, you know, it's, you just, some nights it is, and then it's just you know, knowing when, where your limits are, you know. I've definitely lived with no limitations in the past when I was younger, but, you know, I, I think I've just come to, to, to find a good balance with it. What inspired the lyrics? And we're going to start off with the songs, Polygon of Eyes. Start off with that one. What inspired the lyrics for Polygon of Eyes? Oh, man, probably an acid trip three or four years ago inspired okay. that. All right. <laughs> uh, Salvation Slave. Well, that's changed so much. I still find new definitions in its lyrical content. Is it a person? Sal the slave? Yeah. No, I think it's, it's like an internal you? slave. It's... Um, well, I, I kind of have to think about the lyrics again because it always takes on a new definition. Um, it, I mean, it started out really being about dancing and having a, having a good time, and then it just, you know, how it enslaves you, just the ta having a party and having a, a a good experience with 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 a, a fun night, maybe a trip or, a, you know, a, like an out of body experience or something. Antioch. Antioch's interesting. It's about friends betraying one another, in a sense. Antioch is also like a, a in California. There's an Antioch. There's also a band from San Diego that I loved for years called Antioch Arrow, and it was just kind of a cool name to name that song. That's actually a song that's that its name doesn't really specifically correlate with the lyrical content. <clears throat> okay. Sometimes the lyrical content of songs um, spirals into its, like, finds its meaning with the name, and sometimes it just has nothing to do other than the fact that you got you have to name a song something. Sometimes you have to name a song like, you know, Booger Sugar or something, and it sticks. Hopefully it won't, but it sticks, you know. So it's kind of like just, like, give the song a name, you know, give, give the dog a bone, you know. Red Blood, The River Flows. Um, well, that... That, that's actually about kind of the Red River area in Austin. Um, and a girl that I once knew who ended up passing away. Oh. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a, an amalgamation of, I mean, it's, it's a mixture of different things that that song's about. What would you perceive as the greatest outcome of your future in music? What would I perceive? Yeah. Um, just being able to touch as many people as possible with the music, you know, reach as many parts of the world, you know. I mean, we really only have this world to explore, and, you know, I mean, if I could get on a spaceship or something and go to a different planet, then maybe, you know, that's a new horizon to conquer, you know. But, you know, sustaining ourselves, you know, so we don't have to work and... I don't, I don't ask for a lot, I guess, you know, maybe maybe a, a, my own place someday, my own house, or, you know, to be able to take care of my parents, you know, like they took care of me and supported me. Are you a spiritual person? And if so, can you define it? S spiritual or religious? In the song, A Polygon of Eyes, I know you say destroying religion. So what 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 is what is that what does religion mean to you and how is it an impediment? Why would it ha need to be destroyed? That that see that's kind of part of the journey that the song's on, like the trip that the song's on, the dreamscape of conquering, of, of being able to overtake and overthrow the boundaries that religious uh, persecution puts people in. Like like I I truly believe that religion is like something that should be you know, more spiritual, more internal, and less of a game, 
like less. I feel like the religions ruined so much. Like organized religions just kind of ruined so much of the world. You know, my family, I was adopted, you know, and the family that raised me was Jewish and you know, I learning about the Old Testament and the New Testament, you know, like I know what I like from both and you know, it's just it's like I, I've I've had a good Jewish family. So and then and what I see in, in Judaism and what I see in Christianity, you know, there, there's goods and bads about the religion, but I think it's 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 more imp, imp, implied um, as a, as a spiritual thing. It it should be more implied as a, as a spiritual thing than teaching values. Then you know, I mean, I'm not really a religious person in that sense because like organized religion has just been. You know, it's been good to me, but I see what it does to the world, and I think that that's, that's wrong. I'm, I don't agree with that. It's been taken, like, way over the line. Like, my God versus your God. I mean, that's all just bullshit. So what brings you the most peace in your life right now? Doing this. Your favorite Dio song with Black Sabbath? Man, maybe Neon Nights. Yeah, that's a killer one. Okay. It, with Rainbow. Gates of Babylon. Solo. Rainbow in the Dark. Just because it's the first Dio song I heard, and it just, it, he just, it, the performance of it. I mean, I know it's like a hit song, and you know, it's, I mean, I, there's a lot of Dio songs. I mean, Lock Up the Wolves is, is a good dark song. How would you define the word love? I think love is just ultimately what we strive for, you know, whether you're good or evil, you're looking for love in either all, all the wrong or all the right places. I mean, love is, is, is that ultimate balance over money and fame and power. And it gives you all of those, in a sense. And, and strong word. we'll know for the first time if we're evil or divine. We're the last in line. So good. I, uh, I love that you're you're such a fan of Dio's work. Blaring out with Eric Blair show with Aaron <laughs> Jonathan Black of Scorpion Child signing off. Yeah. Bye bye. The Blaring Out Show.